Next, uh, I have a something similar thing at Timber area. It's a single family house, uh, four bedroom, two bath, 1400 square foot. Uh, very cute, great schools, great location, close to everything. So bring a buyer. Thank you. I put my contact information on this one too. Hi. Hey, how are you? Good morning. I'm I'm alive and safe and healthy. How are you? I'm good. Good. I'm worried about everybody with all the fires. Yeah. You should. I had. I'll text you pictures. You should have seen the ash on my car this morning. That's crazy. Um, my teammate Mary Phyllis lives in Boulder Creek, and she was evacuated last night. She they're fine. They're in a hotel in um, Sunnyvale, I think she said, and they're doing okay. But um, yeah, it's. I thought maybe this summer we were going to get past that, and then one weekend, boom, fires everywhere. Yeah, and I've heard a lot of issues again. PG&E, um, which is lightning, the lightning strikes were just crazy too. Yeah, when you know it wasn't the shutting off the power part; it was the turning everything back yeah. on. Yeah, yeah, the surges. Yep, yep. yep. Um, thank you so much, Pablo, for this morning. I really appreciate it. And you, uh, oh, let me make you a co-host. Most importantly. Yeah, I also. Okay, there you go. All right. And I know you know how to do this, so um, I probably will stay on with you for just a sec just to, as people jump right on, you know, there'll be people joining in the first five minutes at like from 9 to 9.05. Okay. Yeah, not a problem. Um, but just to let everybody know that we had a bit of a change. <laughs> we pivoted. We shifted. That's right. <laughs> and I really appreciate, I, I take it you got everything I sent you last night. Yep, I okay. got it all, and I am ready. All right. There we go. Awesome. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, morning. All right. Do you know Danielle Willis? I don't. I don't know Danielle Willis. She's up in the Santa Rosa area, KW, and um, she did an amazing class yesterday. On, she calls it digital door knocking because she's built her whole business with Facebook. And um, gosh, we had we had like uh, I think uh, sixty plus people in that Zoom yesterday, and it was really good. Such a good class. That is awesome. Yeah. I yeah, it was really good. Full of stuff. All right, and it looks like some more people are still jumping. Yep. Like I said, you'll get, and I don't know if you knew this, but um, if I put stuff in the chat be before people join, they don't see it. They, yeah. The chat, yeah, I learned that a week or two ago, and so I've been, I was throwing all this stuff into the chat right away and then realized nobody was seeing it. So I have a few instructions that I'll put in the chat during the hour that we're together. Um, and, but otherwise I'm going to hide myself and let you go at it. So good morning, everybody. I wanted to introduce you all to Pablo Vadillo. If you have not already met him, um, he's going to be teaching today. Um, definitely well qualified to teach this class. Yvonne Zinsman, who is supposed to teach for us today, um, had a family emergency. So at the last minute, Pablo um, was available. So thank you. Appreciate it. And you guys are going to love him. If you haven't ever been in a class setting with Pablo, you're going to love him. He's amazing. So thank you so much, Pablo. I appreciate it. And I think you'll probably have a few more people jumping on. But this group that's been taking Ignite, they've been super engaged, talking, great conversation. So I think you guys will have a good hour together. So thank you. Awesome. I love it. Thank you, Laura. Thank you for, for calling on me and asking yeah. me to jump on. I love to teach. So obviously when you asked, it was very easy to say yes. Thank you. I appreciate it. So I'll be in the background, but if you need anything, just sort of holler. Okay. okay Thank you. Pull up the and you're welcome to introduce yourself in whatever form or fashion you want. Wonderful. Thanks.
All right, so you guys all have to call me Nighthawk. Just kidding. That's not real. Uh, my name is Pablo. I am um, the area director for United Home Group. Uh, that is an expansion team here within Keller Williams. I'm out of the Cupertino Market Center, so just a, you know down the road from you guys. Um, yeah, I've been in real estate now, I guess, 14 years. I've been a solo agent. I've been a part of a small team. I've ran a team. I'm running a team now. I've uh, been an assistant team leader, an interim team leader, a PC. So I've kind of seen it, done it all. And when it all comes back down to it, my biggest passion is teaching and training. So I'm super excited to be here with you guys. Today, we're going to be talking about um, open houses what that looks like in the middle of a global pandemic. How do we continue to do open houses virtually um, and continue to get great results from there? So I always like to kick off um, all of my classes with gratitude because as Diana Kokoska taught us in bold, gratitude is the highest form of energy. So if anybody would like to take themselves off mute and just share with some with the group, something that you're grateful for today? Well, I am grateful for waking up this morning and not being in a zone um, where I have to evacuate, even though I have a lot of friends who are having to do so. Um, and I'm fortunate and grateful that all my friends are safe. I love that. I'm grateful that your friends are safe and I'm grateful that you're here with us today, Dennis. Thank you. Yeah. Anybody else have some gratitude to share? Thankful that you're here with us, King of Sourdough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, it's funny. I, I appreciate you, Jordan. Jordan's one of my buddies. I love him. Um, yeah, I'm, I've, like all of you guys, I'm stuck sheltered in place, and I've taken to baking bread because we ran out of bread. And now I love it, and there's 100 pounds of flour sitting in my kitchen. So I do bake for referrals. So if you guys you know, have any uh, referrals up here, I'm happy to send you guys some sourdough down there. <laughs> All right. Um, so jumping into today, we're going to dive right into what successful agents do each and every day. So there's two sides to this as you guys have been going through it. There's a side that allows you to grow your business and there's a side that allows you to run your business. Today, we're going to be focusing on the growth side of things. So we have until 10 a.m. together. Um, we're going to be going through the material. I like to share a lot, um, make it as interactive as possible. I ask a lot of questions, and I will be super silent if nobody's answering the question. So I will sit here in silence and make it super awkward for you guys. So highly, um, yeah, just participate. Make it fun. We have an hour together. Let's make it the best hour in our day. Um, and the goal today is to learn how to successfully incorporate open houses into our lead generation strategy, even in today's world um, where open houses aren't necessarily allowed. So it's still a strategy we can use, and that's what we're going to talk about. So what are some of the benefits of open houses? Do you hold open houses to sell the house or to pick up um, buyers or sellers? Yes. All, yeah. all of it. Good. All of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you're thinking, I'm just going to go out and pick up buyers at, at a, an open house, you know. Guys, this is an opportunity to also be getting in front of potential sellers. So your goal in holding an open house is not only to sell the house, it's to put yourself in the path of good things to happen, right? A lot of the people who traditionally walk through open houses are usually neighbors. Now with the PAD forms and all of the things that people have to go through now, you're not going to get a lot of looky-loos um, coming through and a lot of neighbors coming through the house. And we'll get to, okay, how do we still get in front of those people in just a moment? And the thing I want to drive home is that when you're doing an, and working an open house, you're not just there for buyers. It's really and the big opportunity is really to get sellers and find sellers. So benefits of holding an open house. Number one, it's inexpensive. Number two, you get a high return on investment and high exposure. So 
let's talk about how it's changed and how you can still do open houses in, in today's world. So the big thing is that number one, we can all agree open houses are inexpensive, right? How much does it cost you to hold an open house? $24. $24, Chris, <laughs> I love it. Why $24? She's got it down. Food and drinks and a, a quick run of a couple flyers, but not anymore. So it's even more free than that. Okay, great. Um, are you spending any money on Facebook ads to promote it, boost it? So if you're just starting out and you're thinking, hey, I don't have money to throw at this, great news is you don't really need any. 24 bucks to do an open house, that's great. However, if you're doing four open houses a week, that's 100, that's 100 bucks a week. And before you're even making or closing deals, 100 bucks a week can start adding up rather quickly. So I'm gonna share with you guys some ways that you can do open houses almost for free. Um, just investing a little bit of money if you choose down the line on Facebook ads and things like that. The big thing is with our virtual world, we now have the opportunity to hold open houses and have people be able to attend those open houses without them physically having to be there live. Can I explain? So who here is using social media to promote their open houses? Nobody. Who here has <laughs> Facebook or Instagram? Yes, I have Facebook and Instagram. Yeah. Okay, perfect. That one's complete. So here's what you guys are gonna do. When you first get to the house, yes. you are going to do a Facebook video, a Facebook live video. And you're just gonna literally walk them through the house. Hey guys, Pablo here. I wanna show you guys this great open house. It's a new listing in San Jose. It's three bedrooms, two bathrooms listed at 1.28 million. Let's go take a look inside. <laughs> Sounds like I practiced that once or twice, right? right. Like, All right, come on in. And then you literally walk them through the house. And what I like about doing it on Facebook Live and is that it allows people to now interact and see you at work. Not only that, but you don't need to be live or you don't need to catch the live feed to actually watch it. So somebody who's at work, let's say Dennis is at work all day, doesn't get home and he's like browsing Facebook at two in the morning after the kids have gone to sleep. He's going to, that video, that live video is going to come up on his feed and he's going to see my open house video as if it was happening live. Right? So this is an easy way to get a lot of exposure and a lot of eyeballs. And it's something you should already be doing. So first you do a Facebook video and then you say on your Facebook video, Hey guys, now I'm going to do this on Instagram. So jump on Instagram and join me there. And then you're going to do an Instagram video. Same thing live. And once you've done that and you've had some people view it, you're going to post it, right? So it posts automatically on Facebook. It posts automatically on, on Instagram. And now that's just going to be gathering views on your behalf. The other thing that you can do, if you have an iPhone, um, I haven't used a um, Android in years. So sorry, Android users. If you're using an iPhone, here's the hack. You walk around the house and you do short videos of just you walking around the house and like the little things and you can get fancy with it, like do the little panning and like do this. Your phone is loaded with iMovie. You can stitch together a video that looks pretty professional in like five minutes. And now all of a sudden, now you have another point of contact. So you can upload that into YouTube. You can upload that again into Facebook. And hey, check out this video. If you didn't catch my live video, check out this professional, vi professional video of this open house we're doing. So any questions around that? Because those are some strategies. None of this is in the materials, but this is what I'm doing and what our team is doing. So I wanted to share it with you since the whole open house game has kind of changed. No. No questions on that. Question actually. Um, so a live video is more effective than if you were to record and then uploading a video after the open house? Correct. And you actually, you want to do both. Right. 
So the live video, the reason you want to do a live video is because anyone who's on Facebook at that moment, who's on your friends list will get a notification saying Dennis is going live or Dennis is doing a live video. Not only that, but the stories at the top of uh, your feed, live videos show up first in the stories. Mm -hmm. So it's a way to like, just push yourself to the top of people's feeds and they won't even realize that you're doing it. Great question. Thank you. You have, do you have data to show how, how uh, successful that is compared to other ways of uh, doing uh, the, the ads, uh, video ads? So I'm trying to understand the question. Are you talking about video? Yeah, ads yeah. About analytics. professional video, let's say, what's the data of people responding to this personal, very cheap, great way, very convenient uh, com versus uh, professional video taken? Yeah, that's a great question. So here's the thing. It, it depends on the audience, right? So with your Facebook, with your Instagram live, it's mostly going to be people in your sphere, people that know you. So mm -hmm. being real and being authentic is really what they're looking for. Now, if you're going to be running an ad um, on Facebook, let's say for that virtual open house, I would not run an ad with the selfie video. I would run an ad of the me holding the camera video doing this, right? Walking through the house and having it stitched a little more professionally. So if your audience is the people that you know, be authentic, be your true self, do the selfie, you know, that's what they want to see. You don't have to be overly professional, overly edited. In fact, that'll turn people that you know off a little bit. They're like, oh man, Elsie's trying too hard. <laughs> Just be authentic. If you are going to be running an ad or you're going to be poo um, boosting it, boosting the post, I almost said poo. Um, if you're going to be boosting the post, then you want to have more of the um, professional video. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great question. And guys, what I have found is when running ads through campaigns and command, high quality video does generate at least four times more leads and traffic to those ads than just using photos or like the selfie videos. So true analytics from my experience is at least a four time more engagement on the professional videos on, on ads, not on actual posts. Mm -hmm. Great Thank questions. You. Any other questions before we move on? All right, I love it. You guys are great. So as we mentioned, open houses are a prospecting activity and the entire goal is meant to generate future business. So a good way if you're doing the virtual open houses on Facebook, um, if you don't have a listing, talk to somebody in your office who wouldn't mind you promoting their listings. Uh, you guys can promote my listings all day long. I, <laughs> Great. Um, and what you do is, is the following. Hey guys, I'm going to be doing a virtual open house on this listing and you download the pictures from the MLS. Again, have permission from the agent to promote. Don't just do it. Get permission and get the photos, right? And say, hey guys, I'm very excited. Tuesday at five o'clock or Tuesday at three, I'm going to be doing a live virtual open house on this property. DM me for more information. I don't put like the room count, the price on that because what I want the draw to be is the photos. And I want the draw to be the open house. So I'm not gonna list the price. I'm not gonna list the bedrooms and bathrooms. If people want that information, I want them to DM me or you know, comment or something. And then you, so that's the first post, that's touch number one. And then the, the second touch is actually the, the virtual open house. So, Let's go into preparing, prospect, and pursue. So the preparation is what we just talked about. It's the leading up to it. Once <laughs> shelter in place is lifted and we can go back to doing traditional open houses, preparation goes into printing the flyers. Preparation goes into making sure that you have the signs and knowing where you're gonna put the signs. 
it's pouring the drinks and having the drinks ready. If you're like me and you like to create a little bit of ambiance, it's maybe getting the, the cookies and baking the cookies before people get there or baking the bread before people get there so the house smells like fresh baked goods. Whatever it is, like find your own thing and start creating a system around what you're gonna do each and every single time that you're going to do an open house. So if every single time I'm gonna do an open house, I'm gonna do a virtual open house, then three days before the open house, I'm gonna do my open house post. The day of the open house, I'm gonna actually do the live video on Instagram, the live video on Facebook, do my iPhone video, and then the pursue, right? Because right now we can't prospect while we're there. The pursue is the follow-up. So in a traditional open house, you're gonna have people coming in and you're gonna be taking down their information. I'm gonna give you guys a script for that, so don't worry, you guys, you guys will walk away with that. And the whole goal of the open house is to capture information. So that way at the end of the open house, we can start pursuing these people and start adding them into our database and into our pipeline. So who here would like our script for open houses? All right, I see three, four hands. Everybody else, I'm gonna kick you guys off the call. Just kidding. So I'm gonna type it into the chat. This is all you need to know. LP Mama. Has anyone heard of LP Mama before? No. No? no. Awesome. Okay. So LP Mama, like everything else in Keller Williams, is just another one of our many acronyms. And it's designed to help you. And if you're like me, I actually carry my LP Mama on a five by seven card, so I never forget it. This will help you with any open house, any potential buyer. If you're at a party and somebody asks you about the market, LP Mama. So enough about LP Mama. Don't talk about my mama. Ha ha, guys, it's a joke. I saw Clifton laughed. All right, so LP Mama. The first L, the only L, stands for location. Great, so hey, thank you so much for coming to our open house. How do you like the neighborhood? Is this an area that you guys have been looking into for a while? If it's a sign call, Hey, um, oh, you're calling about 123 Main Street. Great, while I pull up the information, let me ask you, is this, is this the area that you've been looking for or is this the area you're shopping in? So location, the P stands for price. Great, so hey, this house is, is listed at 1.25. Is this the price range that you're looking in? Oh yeah, you know, it's it's a little bit lower than, than what we're thinking. We can probably go a little higher. Or you know what? Yeah, 1.25 is kind of like the, the top of our barrier of entry. Okay, great. The M starts for, stands for motivation. Let me ask you, buying a house is pretty exciting. What's next for you? Why are you guys buying? The A stands for agent. Who's helping you with that? Or is anyone helping you with that? <laughs> Mortgage, have you been pre-approved yet? That's, that. That's the second M. And then the last A is appointment. So it's location, price, that's the LP. And then the mama is motivation, agent, mortgage, appointment. And if you follow this structure, the appointment is kind of like a natural ending to it. Great. So, hey, tell me about this location. Is this a neighborhood that would, you know, fit your, your, your needs and wants for your family? Yeah. You know, we love this neighborhood. We like the schools. Wonderful, wonderful. And we're listed at 1.25. How's that price for you guys? Is that around what you guys are looking at? 
yeah, yeah, you know, 1.25, that's something we can definitely make happen. Okay, great. Tell me, why, why are you moving? It's pretty exciting stuff. Oh, yeah, you know, um, my wife is pregnant. We're getting ready to have kids with um, COVID and shelter in place. We really need more space. And, um, you know, that's, that's kind of what, what we're looking for now. Okay, great. Are you guys working with anyone? No, 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 just kind of browsing right now. Okay, great. And have you already been pre-approved? Um, you know, I, I started the conversation. I, I don't think we ever finished it. Um, so I'd have to like circle back and talk to my lender. Okay, great. So it sounds like the location is great. You're feeling pretty good about the price and you're ready to go. So really the next step is for us to set up a time where you, can, you and I can meet and we can do our 15, 20 minute buyer consultation where we sit down and we go over the entire buying process. You're gonna ask me a million and one questions. And then from there, we actually, I ask you a million questions and we jump into the consultation on what exactly you're looking for. So I do have time available tomorrow with two o'clock or would four, four o'clock work best. So it's a very natural conversation as you're walking them through the LP mama. Now, if you get to the first M and you find out that they're not motivated, do you have to continue through the conversation? Yes, it's not nice to cut them abrupt. You need to be human first. Yeah, yeah you need to be human. And at the same time, it allows you to know, okay, I'm probably not going to continue to waste more time on this person. Or if they say, hey, um, I already have an agent. Wonderful, do you guys have um, a signed agreement? Yeah, yeah, you know, we, have, we do have a signed agreement, wonderful. Let me know if you have any other questions, right? And you have to disengage at that point. That's what I like about LP Mama is that there's some litmus tests throughout that if for whatever reason, they're really not a prospect, you'll know early on to where you won't have to take them through the whole thing. Does that make sense? Yes. Wonderful. Any questions on this model? Do you sign the buyer broker agreement? Every single time. I signed two this week. Yeah. And the reason I do it is, um, and how it happens is in the buyer consultation, right? So every single buyer that I talk to, we have to do a buyer's consultation. And at the end of the consultation, there's four questions. And those four questions are, how do I win with you? How do I lose with you? What do you expect from me as your real estate consultant? And this is the, this is the real closing question. What can I expect from you as my client? So how do I win with you? How do I lose with you? What can you expect from me as your real estate consultant? And what can I expect from you as my client? And those four questions at the end of the consultation closes it out naturally. Wonderful. So the next steps are you just have to hire me and we just have to put it in writing. Now, the great thing is, is that it's a, you can cancel this contract at any point in time. And in fact, if I'm doing anything less than 10 plus service, I expect you to fire me. And uh, do you um, do you use the card form? For I, the, do. I do. Yeah. 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 And you put the seller will pay for the commission. I put seller will pay for the commission. Yep. Do you go through the whole contract uh, item by item? I only do if they're like a high C personality where they need to go through every line item by line item. Mm -hmm. um, however, what I tell most people, it's like, hey, signing this form is like buying a car. If you want to buy a house, ultimately, you're going to have to sign this form. And essentially, all it says is that you're hiring me to be your fiduciary. Now, do you want to know what's great about me being your fiduciary, Viviana? Mm -hmm. I always have to put your best interest first. How cool is that? Legally, I am obligated to always do my best in representing you. 
And guess what? As a zealous advocate for you, I will do everything I can to make sure you're taken care of. However, I can't do any of that if you don't hire me. That's right. So let's do the right thing and get me hired. For how long do you have the contract? How many months? It depends. Um, I usually sign it for a year. Mm -hmm. And then in the cancellation clause, I put in another year. <laughs> <laughs> so everything you have showed them, uh, you will receive commission if, uh, if you did your work showing mm -hmm. them the property and everything. Correct. Yeah. Um, even up to a year after. Now, how often do I really pursue bad clients that not very often at all? Um, I've had to fire clients. I've never been fired by a client. And it's, it's pretty nice to be able to have enough in your pipeline to be able to say, hey, you know what, we're not working well together. Let me refer you to somebody who I think might be a better fit for you. And keeping a piece of the referral fee at least. Mm -hmm. Great question. So in the contract, you have um, kind of uh, both ways that uh, either you can leave them or they can leave you if uh, one of you is not, uh, you know, behaving kind of? Yeah, yeah. And, and I make that very, I set that expectation up front um, in the buyer consultation. It's like, hey, there's only, there's one of me. <laughs> yes, I do have a team, but there's really only one of me. And when it comes to representing our clients, we can only represent the clients that are motivated in that moment. So you might not be looking to buy for another couple months. That's great. Understand we're not gonna be in your face making you buy a house. However, when you do say, hey, I'm ready, all my focus is gonna be on you. Now, if at that point in time, we're finding that we're not gonna be a good fit or we're just not working well together, we might need to have a conversation where we smile, we shake hands and we part ways. Because I, I, as your fiduciary, my job is to make sure you're getting your house. And if I'm not making that happen for you, then I'm not acting as a fiduciary and we need to figure something else out for you. Is that fair? And you know, I, I make them think that it's their decision. <laughs> Great questions, guys. All right. When it comes to the follow-up, always make sure that you're following up um, pursuant to the Telephone Consumer Protection Act, uh, following the rules if somebody didn't give you their phone number, or if they're on the do not call list. Don't be that one that's like, oh, I, you know, I'm going to be smarter than the rest or I'll stop when I get caught. Don't, don't do that. Don't be that person. Setting up for success. So... Once you've made the decision to host an open house, ideally you wanna give yourself some leeway, um, really a runway to be able to get it all going. So on Monday, you're gonna select the open house that you're gonna be doing. From there, um, actually before we move forward, there is a little bit of strategy in choosing the open houses that you decide to hold open. Now, in a more traditional market, it's a lot more important. However, I do like to, to pause on this and talk about it because if I don't bring it up now and things go back to normal, I wanna make sure that you guys have it. There's things that go into choosing the right open house. So location, days and times, is pretty big things. Location. Is the property easily accessible? Are there main streets? Are there public streets? What is the visibility on it from the street, right? Is it near schools? Time of day. If you're doing it at 11 a.m. when everybody is at work, are you gonna have a lot of foot traffic when things are normal, right? Probably not. So if you have a listing or there's an open house near a school, again, when things are back to normal, you might choose to do your open house from two to 3.30 or two to four, 
during a weekday. Because if you've ever been around a school at two o'clock, that big line of parents always stops in front of the school and everybody needs something to do. And if you have an open house near a school from two to four and you have all your signs up, you're gonna get a ton of parents coming by. So the other thing is timing wise, most agents do Saturdays and Sundays one to three or two to four or one to four, right? Right. I don't. <laughs> I'm like the, that rebel, right? Gary always yeah. says, look at what all of the, look at what agents are doing and then do the opposite. I do my open houses on weekends from 10 to one. But you know, I, I start, I do it from 11 to three. Yeah. Or, 12 to 5 or because uh, people are they want to go to lunch and you know they want to to, to be done early um, people that couldn't um, uh, they close the other open houses and they are still they don't have time to mm -hmm. the homes so they come last to you to see you and they have they are more relaxed because there are no other open houses to visit and when I don't have a listing, I go into the house with my key to expensive homes after the open house is done, and I just wait inside for the for the late <laughs> the late comers. And trust me, you get great buyers that are coming late. Yeah. And um, so having a strategy on being around when other people aren't or being available when other people aren't. Yeah. So even scheduling like Viviana is talking about, hey, so our typical open house is going to be from, let's say, one to four. And we're doing private wine tastings and showings since it's a really nice house from five to seven. So if you want to sign up for the, the wine tour and the wine tasting with the house, you know, you have to set up a private time. So Having different strategies like that are always awesome. Thank you so, so much for sharing, Viviana. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Now, I don't want you guys, like I love virtual open houses. It's probably my favorite thing ever because it allows me to be at a house for 30 minutes and that's it, <laughs> <laughs> right? Or Viviana is talking about, you know, having and being there from 12 to five. That's great if you're not just going to be sitting there for the five hours, like just twiddling your thumbs, right? So making oh, sure no, that- you... There are so many things to do, writing a hand, a written, handwritten notes. I do a lot of things. I love that. And that's I what I want to Tony Robbins about. books to motivate me a little bit more. <laughs> and I'm busy. I'm busy. Yes. yes, because if you're just going to an open house to sit there for five hours, no. oh my goodness, kill me now. <laughs> like- and if you're going to be there and being active with your time and you're going to be building your, um, your prospecting, you're going to be reaching out to people, you're going to be reading, like, and you're going to be working, those are five hours well spent. However, I do like to talk about it because with open houses, they're usually done on the weekends and that's usually when it's our time with our families. So if you're spending five hours at an open house, great, awesome use it to build your business and still make sure that you're scheduling time with your family. That's my only thing with open houses is make sure you're still taking some time for family. Um, Tuesday, you're going to post online. You're going to generate your call list and you're going to call the 25 neighbors. So again, we talked about um, adhering to the do not call policies and making sure you're not, you know, somebody answers the phone. What do you want? Nothing. Click. Bye. <laughs> Um, Laura's still on here, so I can't be naughty. So I'll, I'll save something for another time. Um, Wednesday, you're going to post online. Uh, you're going to talk about, hey, um, this coming Saturday, we're going to be doing this virtual open house. Come check it out. Here's the beautiful pictures. Let me know if you guys have any questions. Again, with the Wednesday post, I would avoid um, giving too much information about the house because you want people asking you. So Again, it's okay to withhold some information. People are gonna be like, well, why didn't you post the price or how many bedrooms does it have?
great. I'm glad you're asking. That's engagement, right? You don't want people just scrolling. Oh, it's two bedrooms, two bedrooms, oh, whatever. Okay. So you want them to stop and be like, oh, this is pretty nice. Let me ask Pablo some more information about it. Thursday, again, you're going to post it online again. You're going to invite your database to the open house, um, to your virtual open house. And you're going to email, if you have any buyer leads or anything like that, you're going to email them out about the virtual open house. Friday, you're going to prepare your materials. So oh, it's in the car. But we have our own open house boxes where we literally have hand sanitizers, um, Lysol, face masks, uh, shoe covers, all of this stuff that we bring to us to our open houses. Um, not really open houses, the showings, our listing showings. Uh, so if somebody does forget to bring a mask, um, whatever, we can always make sure that we're cleaning up behind them. So making sure that you have all of those materials ready um, and you're not scrambling the day of. And then Saturday, it's gonna be your open house. So we talked about Facebook Live, we talked about Instagram Live, and another strategy you can do and that I haven't talked about because I did it and I didn't, and I wasn't a big fan of it. However, I have seen other people use it, so I have to share it because it's a best practice. And just because it didn't work for me doesn't mean it can't work for you. It's the Zoom virtual open houses. So what you do there is you go to the open house and you set up a Zoom meeting, right? And you set up a Zoom link on Facebook so that everybody can click on it and it just drops them into your Zoom. For this to work, you're gonna need two devices, preferably your phone and your laptop. And you're gonna have both of them logged into the Zoom room. When somebody comes into the Zoom room, you're gonna greet them on the laptop. Hey, how's it going? Thank you so much for coming out, Cheryl. Uh, let me go ahead and walk you through the open house. You're gonna grab your phone, and now you're gonna take your phone, and with your phone, that's how you're gonna give them the virtual tour. I don't like this because for me, it's kind of like just sitting at an open house, and if nobody logs into the Zoom room, you're just sitting there <laughs> smiling at the camera because you never know when someone's gonna come on. And of course, like the five seconds you decide to like, tie your shoe or pick up the thing you dropped or like pick your nose is the second somebody comes on. So always, 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 it always Lee happens. Lee knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> you know what? I am the luckiest to get busted. You know, like things like that always happens to me. <laughs> always. I never miss Just a assume, hey, just assume guys, as soon as you no, get up, I, that's when the client's going to call. I'm the worst. I'm always like, I got people waiting. I'm like, I'm waiting for a delivery all day. I'm like, okay, I gotta go to the bathroom, gotta go to the bathroom, gotta go to the bathroom, okay. Not gonna go, not gonna go, not gonna go. And then like the five seconds I choose to go to the bathroom is the five <laughs> seconds that delivery comes and goes. I'm like, <sighs> okay. <laughs> Come on, there we go, plan for success. So we talked about location, time, traffic patterns, local practices. Again, with open houses, guys, you want to put yourself in the way of good things to happen. So follow the traffic patterns. We talked about schools, best practices around schools, um, and being conscientious. So if you have a big main street near your open house, making sure that you're using that to continue to drive traffic. Now, traffic patterns that is not in the materials that I do also want to talk about because of where we are and the way we're having to do business. Traffic patterns also goes into web traffic. So everybody's sheltering in place. Everybody has a lot more time than they did. We know there's a lot more eyeballs in social media than there was before. We used to, and we have a class we teach called seven steps to 10 listings a month. And it's Wednesday, so this is perfect, where we teach that Wednesday afternoons, usually one to three, is when Facebook has a higher amount of eyeballs on it, as well as Saturdays and Sundays from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. That's changed with the pandemic because more people are just online more. However, I do, I, 
challenge you, yeah, that's the word, I challenge you to start keeping track of all of your social media posts, not just kind of like posting willy nilly and randomly, um, really start tracking, okay, when I post pictures of my dog, I get a certain amount of engagement versus when I post a picture of myself standing outside of a house and start finding out what is actually driving more traffic and start doing more of that, right? It doesn't take a genius, but like I found that if I post just pictures of properties, the engagement is pretty low versus me just taking a selfie outside of a property. I don't know why. My smile is not that cute, but people seem to think so, right? So web traffic, just something else to keep in mind since we're not getting physical traffic. Rule model door knocking. Dun, da, da, dun, dun, dun. All right, so I love door knocking, guys. If you guys can't tell, I love being in front of people. So um, we are gonna do a quick role model on how to door knock around an open house. So who would like to be my neighbor? Elsie, I see you're off, you're, you're not muted. So Elsie, I'm volunteering you. Oh. So ding dong. Hi. Hi, um, my name is Pablo. I'm he visiting here in the area with uh, Keller Williams Cupertino and the United Home Group. Um, I'm at your door um, because Susie and Tony uh, up the street have actually asked me to invite you to our open house this weekend. So we're actually going to be doing uh, two days of open houses on Saturdays and Sundays from two to four. However, um, I wanted to take a moment and invite you to our neighbors only open house on Friday. It's going to be from five to six and we're going to be serving some wine and some hors d'oeuvres. Um, is that something you guys would be interested in coming out for? Well, I would like to come and engage, but uh, I'm not thinking of selling or buying any homes right now. Oh, no, not a problem. Not at all. You know, I always find that neighbors always want to see how their neighbors design their house. So this is kind of your chance to see what they did a little bit different with that half bath in the hallway. Sure, and, I would love to come. Wonderful. And I'm sorry, I didn't even catch your name. Elsie Saba. Elsie, wonderful. Elsie, my name is Pablo. And Elsie, if you would like to bring a friend, family member, um, even a coworker, somebody that might be interested in becoming one of your neighbors, we would love to have them as well. And we'll have one ready for them. Oh, wonderful. That's great. How about social distancing? Are you taking any uh, precautions regarding that? Yeah, so this is a role play if it wasn't social distancing. <laughs> Uh, but, you know, if you want to do the social distancing, yeah, absolutely. So um, everybody has to do a shot of tequila as soon as they walk in. So that way you're <laughs> disinfecting yourself from the inside. Out. <laughs> I I get it. Yeah. <laughs> Come on by. Um, and by the way, Elsie, when I do find a buyer, um, I'm, I always like to share what the neighbors like about the area and the neighborhood. Um, may I ask you, what's one thing or What's something that you just love about the, the area and the neighborhood? Well, it's a um, great neighborhood because it's quiet. The, the, it's very secluded, but uh, yet close to centers for shopping or uh, highways or anything like that. Okay. So it's, um, it has now, positives, uh, you know, all the way around. Great neighbors too. I love that. I love that. Um, and Elsie, I know you mentioned that you guys aren't even thinking about it, but if you were to move, where would you go next? Greece. Greece. <laughs> I love Greece. We're about to Greece. <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> um, well, uh, I don't know. I'm going to be moving to somewhere that is a little bit more affordable since I'm, you know, I'm getting to the age of retirement and I would like to use my assets on other uh options that i have still going through life um and yeah. do you have a but i would love to stay in california great and do you have a timeline on when that would be um in about five years or so wonderful wonderful well elsie 
you know, we've been in business now 14 years and I imagine we'll continue to be in business five years from now. So when you are ready, we would love to take care of you. In the meantime, we would love to have you and your friends over on Friday for some tequila shots. And so you guys can check out your neighbor's house. How does that sound? Oh, I look forward to that. Thank you so much. Wonderful. Thank you, Elsa. So go I for it. I have a man. question. Yeah. yeah. So you just uh, shoot me in the heart with the tequila shot. <laughs> uh, I am hesitant about that because like wine tasting or tequila shot, uh, is that uh, by the law for the car or nar? Because it's alcoholic beverage, they are hard liquors. Can we really do that? Or it's like slipper slot? So that is a question for your broker. Mike, okay. Mike. Um, and because it, it varies from office to office. So obviously you are, I just- You are from North California, right? Yes, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm in Cupertino, so I'm right up the street. Oh, Cupertino, yeah, right here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so send me all your referrals in the Silicon Valley when you're too late to get a <laughs> I have a look coming, get me or buy it. <laughs> okay, you got it. So yeah, um, obviously I use the tequila just as a, as a, as a joke. Mm -hmm. um, usually at open houses and these types of things, we usually pour uh, beer and wine just because of exactly what you're talking about, May. Like, you know, now you're getting into a slippery slope of hard alcohol and all of this other stuff. But, um, but yeah, you know, if somebody's like, you know, are you guys taking any, any measurements on COVID and social distancing? Yeah, we're disinfecting you from the inside out. Come take a shot, right? <laughs> Well, I'm actually, I'm glad you are from Cupertino because I am going to hold open house, four open houses over two weekends, Saturday, Sunday, Saturday, Sunday, two weekends. And I was actually thinking about door knocking in the neighborhood. I know it's not uh, allowed, but it's in their street. Like I, I, I can send them postcard, but personal, you know, I don't know. What do you think about that? That's a great question that I don't know how to answer because I can tell you how I feel about it, but I can't tell you how the person in their well, response to that. Yeah. Because again, I'm a big door knocker. I built my business completely around door knocking. I, I love it. I wear my walking shoes every single day. And since the pandemic started, I feel a little weird because I can't go door knocking. Um, I don't see a problem with it. I'm healthy, I wear a mask and all of that stuff. I just don't know how the other person on the other side of the door is gonna react. And here's the thing, with us, since we are such a public facing industry, our job is to always make sure that we're putting people's safety and their concerns before ours, which is why we always talk about like, you know, don't be polarizing online, don't be talking about politics and things like that even though they're important and even though they might be important to you, our goal is not to be polarizing. Our goal is to be able to help and service others. So I would talk to the leadership team at Gateway and find out, um, you know, should I, or is it okay to do door knocking? And if they say no, just be okay with that answer. You can post you can post the event on neighbors uh, kind of uh, website that they do share together now. I am not member of the next door neighbor app because that is not my neighborhood. Yeah, but you can ask the person who you're selling that you're having the open house at to have that posted because it's owner you mean the seller. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> I could, but that sounds really not really agent -y. you know, like it's, you know. So I, I told her I will send down the postcards, but postcards are not going to be ready before. Yeah, well, so. Anyway, I'll figure it out. Let's move on. Sorry. Yeah. No worries, no worries. You and I can, can chat about that offline, Maya, because I want to mastermind with you on that. Social ad campaigns. Um, so we, we talked about running ads through um, command and campaigns. I love this. As I mentioned, if you're going to be running ads, make sure you're running them with videos. It's going to just raise the exposure and it's going to lower the cost per click and the cost per lead. 
significantly. So the engagement will go up. Now, when I use campaigns through command, I'll be honest, you guys, I'm not really using the Instagram or the Twitter options. I'm really just focusing on Facebook. And that's where a bulk of my internet lead generation is coming from. So prospect, promoting and hosting. So at an open house, we always wanna make sure that we're there to greet everybody. I don't like hovering, so don't hover <laughs> around people. However, you should be greeting everybody and having guests sign in. Now, obviously right now with um, the pandemic and everything that's happening, we can't do open houses, we can do scheduled showings, right? So having people coming in in 10 minute intervals, which allows you five minutes to go through and disinfect the house, you can do that. And while you're doing that, you should be greeting everybody using the opportunity to build rapport, qualifying the leads, and then of course, providing value. And the way we provide value is by being knowledgeable, by being ready, by being prepared, like it shows on the slide, showing them a neighborhood snapshot of what's going on in the area. And then being able to offer them pieces of value. So like, hey, um, have you guys heard of our home buyer's ebook? Would you like a copy of that? Or would you like uh, to receive an automatic email every time a home in the area goes on the market? Great, so little ways of building value. Capturing the lead. So you can do this directly on your phone. If you have command open, literally just have it open to the web page and click add lead. And as people are signing in or coming in, you could take down their information. Not only that, but what I like about this method is you could capture them right there on the spot and you can add them into smart plans and things like that from right there. Now the smart plan that I use with um, open house leads, virtual buyer leads, things like that, is what we call the 10 days of pain. And it is painful. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so the 10 days of pain is essentially a 30 touch blitz. So they are gonna hear from me 30 times over the first 10 days that they ever meet me. It's ridiculous overkill. I like see some people rolling their eyes and they're like, what? Yes, and it works. And it's super simple. It's a text, an email, and a call. It takes about five minutes to do. And if you have it set up in your smart plans, really the only thing that you're having to do is make the call because the text and the emails are going out automatically for you. And it's literally like, Hey, May, thank you so much for coming out to our open house yesterday. Just wanted to follow up and see if you received the information I sent you last night. She might answer, she might not. If she answers, great. If she doesn't, okay, great. Next day, hey, May, I sent you an email about um, some of the local uh, properties here in the area. I know you mentioned that schools are really important. So uh, these properties have uh, the great schools you were looking for. Give me a call back if you need anything. And she's literally just gonna get bombarded by me with value and information for the first 10 days. Why do you guys think we do this? Capture them. Well, and you prove your competency and your ability um, to do the job, correct it, uh, correct. And it shows why you should be the agent, you know, that they deal with. Yeah, it allows us to be able to say, hey, you know, I'm persistent, I'm consistent. And if you want somebody that's gonna be persistent and consistent on your behalf, you got me. Laura, I, see I, I know, can I chime in to you? I was loving your what you're saying. I love it, 30, what's it called? 30 days of what? Uh, 10 days of pain. Oh, 10, it was 10 days. Yeah. You're, you're also weeding your garden, you guys. You're, the people who are not real are gonna say, don't ever call me again, or they're gonna totally ignore you. So you get to weed out the ones that aren't real. The goal is to find the gold. So you get 20 leads from an open house or whatever, and you walk away with four 
made four quality ones, that is amazing. And so by doing the type of follow-up that Pablo is talking about, you're weeding your garden. You're weeding out the ones that aren't real. Does that make sense? Actually, when you say that, it does. Yeah. Like think about, think of yourself as a prospector back in like colonial, not colonial times, like the 18th Gold rush, gold rush gold times. Yeah. <laughs> or you got to like dig, you got to sift through all the dirt to find the gold. Yeah. I'm not saying that, you know, people are dirt, but some are dirty. And the, uh, and the part about it is, is you, you have, this is, you're going to get people that are like, stop bothering me, leave me alone. And you're like, thank you for making my job easier. Now I know to delete you. And I, you know, so you can't be afraid of people saying, no, this is a no business. Every no is one step closer to a yes. And so you are looking for the yeses, the ones that are impressed. Wow. Pablo's amazing. His follow-up is so good. I absolutely want a realtor like that to work for me. Right. Absolutely. Sorry. Did I get a little fired up? <laughs> <laughs> no, I love it. Um, and you guys see right, right here on this slide this is really where this is what the funnel comes down to right so once you connect it's all about cultivating and the way you do that is by action-based touch programs reaching out to them and some people some will some won't so what listen my goal for this year is to help 40 families i've had way more conversations than just 40 conversations this year right and there's some people who I've spoken to this year that aren't going to be ready for a year or two years, and that's okay, right? So let's talk a little bit about safety. Um, and I know we're, we're running a little low on time, so I'll make sure we cover the rest of the material as well. So safety first, number one, always park in the street. Don't ever park in the driveway. The reason I say this is because parking in the driveway, if somebody comes and parks their car right behind you, all of a sudden you're stuck, all of a sudden you're trapped. So park on the street, make sure you know what your exit routes are, meet the neighbors so they know who you are, so you know who they are, so that if you do need something, you can easily yell out, May, I need some help. Right, and May is like, okay, that sounded a lot like Pablo. <laughs> Never turn your back on a prospect. So pretend, if you've ever taken theater or you've, any acting, pretend there's a camera on you whenever you're dealing with a prospect. You never wanna have your back to the camera. And you never want to go into a room first. So I'm always like leading them and I'm letting them go into rooms and I'm always the first to exit the room if I'm in the same room with them. Um, Laura, our broker here, not your Laura, my Laura, uh, she's all of like five foot nothing. She's a black belt. And one of the things she always talks about is keeping some sort of object between you and the other person. So if it's like a coffee table or a sofa or a couch or the kitchen island, making sure that there's something in between you. Let someone know where you are and when you'll be done. Guys, I, I can't stress this enough. I, I listen to crime junkies. It's crazy what happens to, to agents out there. Just be safe. I always let my wife know where I'm gonna be, how long I'm expecting to be there. I have find my friends on my phone and I share my location with her because I, you never know. And I've had it one time where um, somebody, you know, showed up really, really late and my wife called me and she's like, Hey, you're supposed to be done by now. Are you done? What's going on? And I was like, yes, they just showed up. I'm fine. I'll call you back in five minutes. And if I don't, you can worry again, but it's great to just have that extra backup and make sure your phone's always charged. Okay. We talked best practices. Um, one of the things people are doing now is having a speaker show up for their open houses. So this is great if you have a wonderful relationship with a lender um, or somebody in insurance, for example. And when you're developing these relationships, 
make sure that the person that you choose to bring in is actually a really good speaker. Quick, terrible like horror story. The very first time I did this, I just invited the um, in-house lender that we had. He was a buddy of mine. I'd never seen him do public speaking. It was the biggest mistake I ever made. Guy was like terrible in front of people. Like he just, he just did. And again, no, no, no fault of his. He just wasn't a presenter. He's a great lender, great business partner. He's just not a great presenter. So if you are going to host a speaker and you are going to ask a lender, make sure they're somebody who can speak. Offer a gift. So a lot of agents are offering like um, Amazon gift cards and raffles and things like that. Hey, uh, we're giving up uh, an hour with our handyman, right? Things like that. Uh, get the house in showing shape and then go live. All things we talked about. So do welcome visitors at the door. Think safety first. Make sure the house is good to show. Don't leave valuables exposed. Don't like, <laughs> don't have lasagna or like, you know, something saucy right before you do the open house. Um, like I love protein bars and trail mix specifically for this because I can quickly just pop some trail mix and continue to keep going. I was going to say something bad. And uh, anyways, don't make assumptions. One of the biggest clients I've had to date was probably like the worst dressed person I've ever met in my life. Literally like showed up in like a wife beater and basketball shorts and like these flip flops that were from like 1973 the guy was a multimillionaire. Yeah. And he owned seven properties. I treated him just like everybody else. And I was like, man, like, who is this guy? And he was like asking me a ton of questions. And I'm like, okay, okay, yeah, no. And at the end of it, he was like, you know, I'm pretty impressed with you. Most people usually see me walk in and they're like, oh God. Which is why I dress like this, because I don't want people just knowing I have money and treating me a certain way, I wanna see how people are actually going, going to genuinely treat me. And he's like, I like you. I went on to sell seven of his properties. He's now retired in Arizona. Awesome guy. So just never make assumptions. Your success kit, disinfecting wipes, toilet paper, guys, toilet paper. If the beginning of the pandemic wasn't a big enough like flag for you to always have toilet paper on hand, this is your sign. It's coming here. It's now. This is your moment. Toilet paper. Always have some on hand. You will thank me for this. Maybe not now. Maybe not tomorrow. But one day, there's going to be an emergency and you're going to be like, holy crap, I'm so happy I have this roll of toilet paper in my car. Thank you, Pablo. You're welcome. Paper towels. Same thing. You never know when you're gonna put your hand into something or like just like reach into something and you're like, ah, you're right, your hand comes out, you're like, ah, what did I touch? So <laughs> having paper towels on hand. Air freshener, guys, this is huge. You know, how's this smell? People smell. Have some air freshener with you. You might smell. Have some air freshener for you. <laughs> <laughs> Backup battery, power for your phone, measuring tape. Um, I can't stress how important it is to have measuring tape. Um, add a marble to, to your list. And you guys are like, a marble? What the heck do I need a marble for? Um, you want a marble? Yeah, to show you if the floor is level or not. You know, I also bring uh, the Windex for the bathroom mirrors or the big mirrors in the, you know, the closet mirrors. Children love to put their hands and, ah, oh. <laughs> I am crazy. It, it drives me crazy, maybe. <laughs> no, no, no. I love it. I love it. So having Windex, um, all of that stuff is, is great. The sign-in sheet. Sign-in sheet, uh, shoe covers, masks, yeah. right? All of our, all of our boxes, um, showing boxes now have uh, packs of disposable masks. 
Yeah, uh, actually, Dollar Tree store sells them one mask in a in a bag, individual bag. So I was thinking about buying them, my maybe like ten fifty because they are individually packed already, and um, I use like I have my magic backpack for open houses. You know, like take and go. Yeah, that's perfect, and I like that um, single single mask because now they're not like pulling it out of a pack and getting their germs on all of the masks. It's just one individual one. And I think Pablo, one thing I have is a checklist for everything. Mm -hmm. I don't have to think twice. I don't have to start thinking, okay, what do I need? This, this and that. Okay, do, do I have everything? You know, and last minute, if I am in a rush, if something happened last minute, I have my checklist. I, have a, I know I have everything and relax relax enjoy the open house there is nothing better than arriving on time with everything you need even your lunch packed your snack packed everything is on time it's so wonderful and you feel so much better you talk with people so be so much better it, it is a great experience it I just it elevates your mindset and it yeah. allows you to be able to yeah. be in the moment versus thinking about like oh did I forget to pack this or oh man I forgot oh. right so I talk about this um for Sundays right so Sundays leading into into Monday making sure that like Viviana is talking about having your checklist set up I know there's an open house class but now we're just talking about best practices in life in general so like what we do in our team is we submit our 411 on Sundays and we post them into our, our group so that all of us know what our plan is for that week. And then um, we go into cleaning our cars, right? Making sure that you get your haircut on, on Sundays and your car is clean and your outfits are picked out for the week. So that way when you wake up on Monday morning, which is everybody's like favorite day and time of the week, Monday morning, you're not having to think right? You can wake up and be like Viviana and be like, everything's taken care of. I got my checklist. I'm like, May, I got my magic backpack. I am ready to go. And I got my calendar all set up. My calendar is going to tell me what to do. All I got to do is show up. It's such a great feeling. I love that. Thank you for sharing it that. Is, it is such a good feeling when you are prepared. Be early, uh, plan everything ahead of time. This is your business. This is, you are running a business. This is not, we are not just a realtor trying to sell a house. No, no, no. This is your business. So important, you know? So important. So important. And yeah. Every and we don't have a boss. We are our own boss. <laughs> yeah, we're our own boss. And then our boss becomes our clients. So if you don't like your boss, fire your clients. <laughs> Um, and then we talked about the follow-up, the 10 days of pain, and really the follow-up is all derived around getting them into an appointment. So when can we meet? When can we meet? When can we meet? When can we meet? All right. So we talked a lot. I talked a lot. So let's jump into some ahas. So what are some ideas, some thoughts, uh, something you heard today that you guys are going to apply or implement in your business? 10 days in pain. Campaigns? 10 days in pain. Oh, 10 days of pain. Yeah. And set it up as a smart plan. So you can be like Viviana and not have to worry about it. I'm like, is this person day three, day four? No, nah. I'm just making my day three calls today making my day four calls today. Systematize it. I love that. Who else? Um, I liked what you said. I never thought much about the, the house, the, the location of the house, you know, how close the park is, how close the schools are. I have an idea because I drive around the, the neighborhood, but I am not an ex. I don't become an expert of the neighborhood, and I should. I should before I do the open house. Absolutely, yeah, I love that. Thank you for sharing. 
Yeah, thank you. Elsie, I think you had something to share. So you take yourself off mute. Yeah, I like the idea of that open house, even if the neighbor is not uh, planning to sell their house or buy anything, but being invited and letting their friends know, maybe they will, you know, that's a potential uh, pool for more um, sales and customers. Yeah, and the good script to use is, um, how would you like to choose your neighbors? Yeah. Thank you. What, I'm sorry, I missed that part. What, why did you say, how do you like to choose your neighbors? Yeah, so when we're doing the, the for that. yeah, when you're doing the, uh, the open house invitation and you're door knocking the neighbors, mm -hmm. one of the lines you can use is, hey, May, so, you know, we have this beautiful house on the market. Tony and Susie are selling their house right down the street. And the reason for me coming by today is to see um, if you would like first opportunity to choose your neighbors. What do you mean by that? So usually the people that move into a neighborhood already know somebody in that's living in that area. They are friends, family. They might They're friends or family, them. exactly. That's what's my point. So if we're doing a um, neighbors only open house, we would love for you to be able to come out, visit, see the house for yourself. And then of course, if you have any friends or family that might be interested in moving into the area, we'd love for you to, to bring them on by. Um, so that way they can at least see it before it hits you know, the open market. So now it's kind of like an exclusivity thing. Clifton, I saw you take yourself off mute. Oh yeah, I was gonna agree with Elsie. I like the uh, door knocking with the neighborhood. It kind of creates that uh, neighborhood expert by seeing your face that you're selling around. And I kind of like the script of LP Mama. I like the foundation of a script where I can kind of like, it's easy to remember like the, the main points, so. Yeah, but it's literally it's just- slope right now, like door knocking during uh, shelter in place on pandemic time. That's what I am worry, worried about. I think our broker will not let that happen. Yeah, so circle prospecting, so getting a list and calling in the neighborhood can have somewhat of a success. Um, it, it can get expensive, and it, it can also be your way of starting to build that relationship, right? And you can strengthen it with a postcard. Um, the thing is for them to start engaging with you and start knowing who you are. You know what I'm imagining now? Driving with the car with a mega microphone. <laughs> <laughs> Ice cream truck. <laughs> Social distancing. Come see this house. Yeah. No, I have a question. Uh, tell me more about the um, gifts and uh, something you can drop by and leave to the, the client. Yeah, so um, offering gifts. So if you're doing a neighbors only open house, this plays really well. You can say, hey, we're going to be, um, this works well with uh, door hangers. So they have, I wonder if I have some. Yeah. So I love this. Um, Avery has these ones, 16150. One, they six, are five, zero. okay. Yeah, one six one five zero Avery. What I like about these is um, so you have two. I don't know if you can see it. You have two door knockers, door hangers on. You stop sharing the the weekend. Oh yeah. Okay. See if it'll let me. There we go. Can you guys just see me now? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, so these door hangers have these two little pull aparts. So what I do with these is on one of them, it's kind of like a ticket. So on one, I'll print my, my business card information on it. And then on the other one, I'll say, bring this to the open house as your raffle ticket to win a hundred dollar Amazon card or something like that. Um, or use this um, and bring a friend. And like the thing is you have to bring a friend to enter a drawing to win a free Starbucks card or something like that. So 
this is what I like to do for, for those open house drawings, these, nice. these door hangers, mm -hmm. um, because then it, it's only the neighbors that are going to get these, right? Because those are the only people that you're dropping these off to. And then they have to show up with the thing. So it's like, if they don't show up with it, it's like, oh, sorry, I guess you're not entering the raffle. I mean, if they forgot, oh, I want to write down one, my name. Do you have an extra one? <laughs> at, that point, that. Can, at that point, you can, as long as you're also capturing their personal information, their phone number and email. Mm -hmm. So I have a question. How many door hangers will you make for one open house? Not 200, right? Not 200. No, 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 no. Um, usually, if, if it were a normal market, I would do 100. Yeah. And I would do 25 on one side of the house, 25 on the other side of the house, and then 50 across the street. But now? But now I'm not doing any door hangers because of COVID. You know, you can do 200, you can do 300. It depends uh, on how much time you have to go door knocking. Make it. Huh. You can do as many as you can. And these, these are pretty cheap too, so. Yeah, they are. My, uh, my problem is with timing. Okay, tell me more. I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go online MLS active on Monday and I'm gonna have my open house Saturday and Sunday. So I will have like about five days before I do it. And for five days, I am not sure my postcards will arrive. So can you print a flyer? And can you flyer the neighborhood? We and cannot flyer. We cannot do it. thing. I don't think we can do no hand exchange. So like, can should not you change print the postcard and send them out yourself. What? Can you print the postcards and send them out yourself? I'm just I'm offering I'm yeah. trying to give you options, right? Yeah. Think beyond one week too. You're talking about your the most important thing you're doing is you're advertising yourself and it doesn't all have to happen all in one weekend. So if unfortunately things aren't going to arrive on time, yeah. you can spread that out. That the bummer about it about properties going into contracts so quickly around here is yeah. it doesn't give agents a lot of time to advertise themselves. So you just got to keep your advertising going. And if you get calls from it, then you're going to go, well, you know, unfortunately that property went into contract Pablo really quickly. However, um, there's other properties that I could um, help you with. You know, you're going to, you're, this relationship is beyond one weekend. Does that make sense? Yeah. And if you're going to send postcards, make sure you're not just sending out the just listed postcard, make sure you're sending out the pending and the sold. So yeah, you might miss the first, you might miss first touch you're not really missing it though because they're still going to receive it so you might miss the first touch however you're going to get them again with the pending and you're going to get them again with the sold yes I, i'm gonna I'm, i'd like I'm, yeah go ahead i'm sorry i'd like to add one more thing that i learned a long time ago in my real estate career from a very successful agent um i i actually stopped sending sorry this is going to be a little contradictory to what we've been talking about in terms of circle prospecting I stopped sending postcards to the neighborhoods more, and I started sending them to my sphere of influence, people in my database, because I wanted them to see how busy I was and how successful I was because I got a lot more business from them than I did canvassing the neighborhood. So if you can afford to do both, I recommend that. And keep in mind, send those postcards to people who already know you. They're gonna be like, wow, May is so successful. We're, I'm gonna refer May to everybody. Actually, Does that make sense? Laura, yes. what you're talking about is one of the biggest ahas I had from Dick Dillingham a few weeks ago when he was teaching his class. Because that's what he said. He's like, I used to just send out all the postcards to that neighborhood and never got anything. Yeah. So I just started sending them to my sphere of influence yeah. and the people who know me, like me, and trust me. And they started seeing how busy I was. So yep. they started sending me business. Yep. That makes sense, Lori. Holy Big aha for me and my business too, for sure. Yeah, that's awesome. So guys, I dropped my phone number and my email into the chat. Um, I'm right up the road. Whatever I can do for you guys, please let me know. I love teaching. I love coming from value, coming from contribution. Uh, so whatever I can do for you guys, just let me know. It's, He's going to be teaching with us again in October. I think it's October, Pablo. Am um, I? So, yeah. Oh, that's right. 
<laughs> and and I sent Laurel a bunch of uh, a bunch of other classes that I that I'd like well, to teach. So thank uh, you. Hopefully, she'll bring me back for one of those as well. Thank you so much for for. Um, teaching for Yvonne today. I know how much she really appreciated it. And it seemed like you guys had a great class today. So thank you. Thank you guys. You guys are amazing. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Thank Everybody you so have a great thank day. You. Thank you. Nice. Thank you. Thanks everyone. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you, Pablo.